Brian How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Not much. Sitting here dealing with it. The Matt and Jacob in the hammer, bro. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard you got a good one. 156 yeah, feet. Killed it. <laughs> I think he's done this before. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <several times. laughs> That's Honestly, my, my favorite under uh, my favorite brand. <laughs> That's right, man. I love it. This is the warmest hoodie I've had ever, I think. Hey, check it out, Brian. You can see it. Let me get into the camera. That's my rock shirt. I like it. You see what it says? <laughs> I can't read. It's too small on my little phone. Uh, it says progress through pain, strength through struggle. That's it, man. That's what it's all about. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to talk about that. Sweet. Why you guys all sitting in the back? Can't 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 Come on up here. You don't know. Don has magical bogey powers. You don't know what he can do with that camera. <laughs> <laughs> They're liable to have a healing. Who knows what might happen? Justify. <laughs> That's it, man. I've seen Josie Brown. Come on in. Well, it's like the yeah. It's like Jim Jones. Come on in and have a glass of Kool Aid the next day of Koresh. Warm yourself by the fire. Let's talk about some things. I got a really good feeling about this one. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. We just don't want you to cast the straight out of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do like being straight. <laughs> like a lot of. I ain't, there ain't gonna be no no no, no problem in that. Um, <laughs> well, Jason's we, question. Well, he's we oh, just metro. He's metro. He's metro. <laughs> so, so it's okay. <laughs> I uh, shoot, man. That never mind. I ain't going to even bring his history up, I believe you that. <laughs> so, we, uh, Jason reached out to me and asked me to talk, and he brought up two subjects to discuss. One is uh, masculinity, and one is success. In my mind, the two go hand in hand. But sometimes when we look at all of this, you know, you got to wonder where we start. I mean, think about every great heathen king that built a kingdom by his own hands. Uh, think about the uh, heroes in the, uh, in the Lord. In the sagas, uh, these manly men doing manly things, and they carved out a piece of the world for themselves. And land was the was the uh, staple then. Fehu, money on the hoof, as my uncle used to say on the dairy farm. He'd look out over that field of cattle and he'd say, "Brian, that's money on the hoof out there." You know, and then you come into this and you say, "Man, that old man was right." Now, how do we do that in today's world? What does that look like? Where do we start? Um, the ideas of masculinity, um, everyone's going to be one up in the next guy. Everybody's going to do some one other. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more manly than he is because I happen to know this. I'm a little more manly than he is because I happen to know this. Um, a heyday of competition is a good thing for me. A heyday of competition always leads to somebody coming out to being a winner. That is success. That's where it boils down. That's where the rubber meets the road. And it applies in business. It applies in sports. It applies in just about anything you do. Somebody's going to put 110% into what they're doing, and they're going to come out on top. That's what men are supposed to do. Where do we learn that? In this day and age, when we have drifted so far, such a radical departure from the established norms of the society, where only thing you're expected to do is punch a time clock, trade your time for someone else's dollars and call yourself a man because of whatever somebody told you. Um, now all of a sudden we're a little bit different than that. Now all of a sudden there's a new set of rules in our life. Now all of a sudden, for whatever reason, whatever calling, whatever idea happened to spring into our mind, we've got new principles that, that underline, that, that create the foundation upon which we stand. It's not an ever shifting political idea of left or right. It's not uh, a, a probationary status as so much of Christianity is. You're only good enough if maybe you have done this or that, that the probationary uh, condition of much of monotheism has been a bane to our existence for a long time. And now all of a sudden we have this capability of having a solid underpinning. Well, what is that supposed to look like? Most of us grew up in homes that are still dealing with the ramifications of the summer of love. When this generation of Americans stood up and thumbed their nose 
at all of the authority figures of society. Generation X and these generations that have followed have been those individuals who were raised in homes that couldn't give a, a hoot less about what somebody's political life. We thumbed up, we were raised by people that thumbed their nose at the establishment. We watched them watch the evening news, complain about Nixon, complain about Reagan, complain about this tax, complain about not enough taxes, complain about everything, always waiting on the other shoe to drop in the back of our minds, nuclear war could break out at any minute. That's a lot of chaos in a man's mind. That's a lot of chaos in a child's mind. Somewhere in there, in times gone past in ancient humanity, our fathers, our uncles, our mothers would be instilling in us these old tales so we might learn how to live in the community and be a viable, productive member of it. All we knew how to do, all we grew up knowing how to do was bitch about stuff. So when we look at our lore, we got to find some foundation. <laughs> I went over it the other day, and it's called the Groagalder. It's in the Zvipdags Mall in the lore, the Groagalder. And it's a scene that I you see in a lot of mythologies, like when Achilles' mother dips him in the river Styx to make him impervious, except for his Achilles' heel. Our lore is a little bit sneakier. All the world has great monuments of rock and stone. And yet when we look at these writings of our ancestors that were put down on paper 1,000 to 1,200 years ago, there's a construct here that makes the thought process in our minds every bit as magnificent as the greatest stonework we see elsewhere. So I'm going to read a little bit today from the, from the Groa God, the Groa Spell. And I'm going to lay out kind of the ideas this wise mother tells her son of what it takes to be a man. And she does it in the most interesting of ways. So Svipdag spake, he said, Wake thee, grow, wake, mother, good. At the doors of the dead I call thee. Thy son bethink thee, thou badest to speak. Thy help at the hill of death. So she's dead. He is Utasita. He is sitting out on the grave mound seeking counsel from his ancestors, from the de -seer, no less, seeking wisdom. So he don't know what to do. He don't know where to go. I think a lot of times we find ourselves in that same boat. We don't know what to think. We don't know where to go. Hmm. Let's find some wisdom in our ancestors. So he does this. Grow a spake. What evil vexes mine only son? What baleful fate hast thou found that thou callest thy mother? Who, lays, who lies in the mold and the world of the living has left. She wants to know, like any good parent should, when we look at our children today, one of the things we always need to realize is we're all they got. We live in a world that could give a shit less about us cultivating any of the gifts or abilities that we are born with, that we are blessed with, that our lore and our faith tells us we're in possession of. They'll dine at our table when we cultivate them. But in the meantime, you're on your own. <laughs> But this mother, she says, what's going on here, boy? Zvipdag spake, the woman false whom my father, em my father embraced has brought me a baleful game. She's challenged him. So he's mad at her. She's challenged him in a way he can't understand how to deal with. For she bade me go forth where none may fare and Mingloth the maid to seek. So Mingloth means the necklace glad. Now, it's been suggested that it's uh, Freya with the Brisingaman gym. So he's supposed to go seek out love of his own. Well, his mother's dead. His dad's screwing around with his broad. And his stepmom says, hey, uh, why don't you go find somebody to love? He's clueless. So he seeks his mother out to find an answer. And she says, long is the way and long must thou wander. But long is love as well. It's worth it. Go through it, deal with it, make that, take that stride, it's worth it. Thou mayst find perchance what thou fain wouldst have, if the fates their favor will give. And you got to remember, when Otter sought out Freya, and the altar stone was turned to glass from heat and blood of sacrifices to the goddess, she cut a wolf loose on his ass because she says, I would not tire my worthy steed, and calls her sister out from under a rock to cut a wolf loose and chase him. Pick it up. We have a ways to go. There's no need to dilly-dally. Be brave. And that lady who cut the wolf loose on him 
reminds him who his ancestors were, where he comes from. The faith and our, rem and our, and our understanding of our ancestors go hand in hand for us to be successful in what we wish to become in any, at, by any yardstick we wish to measure the quality of success or masculinity in our lives. Respect is a crucial part of that. It's Vic Bag. He's asked for a shortcut. And a lot of us ask for a shortcut too. There's a lot of hard work. Who wants to walk around for a long time? I don't want to be alone. Who wants to be alone? We're alone already. We're on the outskirts of a community of a world that really couldn't care less about us succeeding, about thriving, about worshiping this faith. We're ridiculed, denigrated. We're made fun of. I don't want to walk alone. I'm going to find a charm. You see people all the time trying to work with the runes or some kind of special path or magic or work some because there's an avoidance to do the hard work necessary to get rid of some of these things that stop us from becoming what we're supposed to become. Svipdag thinks he's going to pull a fast one on his mom. Work me a charm, mama. Fix something up like a hot toddy for life. Svipdag, charms full good, then chant me, mother, and seek thy son to guard. For death do I fear on the way I shall fare, and in years I am young, methinks. He's scared of dying. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes the fear that is involved in the pains of the heart are more terrifying than anything death might throw at us. And he's supposed to be going and finding love. What if he's not worthy? The girl is spake, then first will I chant thee the charm often tried that Ram talked to, that Ranny talked to Rind. From the shoulder, whatever mistakes thee shake, for helper thyself shalt thou have. Now I'm gonna read that last line again. From the shoulder, whatever mislikes thee shake, for helper thyself shalt thou have. She doesn't offer him any assistance. She's telling him, get rid of some of this small-minded nonsense and this fear. Because what you're going to be able to count on is yourself. For wisdom's wide, for wanderings wide, a better companion than no man might have than his own wisdom. And it's repeated right there. So she doesn't give him any blessings. She reminds him, you got what it takes. Get up and do it. But she did it with love. And I think sometimes that's what we're missing. She told him, for a helper thyself shalt thou have. And that's what we got some days, ain't it? When we're out there working and we're doing our best and we're putting our best foot forward or we're going through life more often than not, when we look up and look around, it's a mighty thin list of who our friends are. That's a reminder right there that all those gifts bestowed to us by Odin, Vili, and Vey, and again by Rig and the reminders from Freya, we have what it takes to become whatever we wish to become. But the road is long, and sometimes it's hard. Get rid of those things in our own thought process that keep us from going where we need to go. Shake it from your shoulders. The next one, she says, Then next I will chant thee, If needs thou must travel, And wander a purposeless way, As one without purpose, The bolts of earth shall on, shall on every side Be thy guards on the road thou goest. The bolts of earth are the signposts on the path that was laid out to you by the norms. You're not going to deviate from that. You can make all kinds of choices, even if it's a purposeless way, even if you're just walking along. That's been laid out. That's been cast a long time ago, probably before you ever come into this world. The norms laid it out. And you're probably not going to get off of that. You have to go forward. You're going to go through it, over it, but you're not going to be able to go around it have to negotiate these obstacles in our own path. Our thought process is what allows us to do this. Believing in ourselves is what allows us to negotiate this path laid out for us by the norms. She didn't give him any help there either, did she? But she reminded him he's got what it takes for more time. Then third, I will chant thee of threatening streams the danger of death shall bring, yet to hell shall turn both Horn and Ruth, and before thee the waters shall fail. Now, that is a blessing. The threatening streams, the danger of death shall bring, yet to hell shall turn both horn and ruth. So she turns the rivers away. These are the rune charms that she's fixing to talk about. So she's reminded him from the beginning, you really do have what it takes. You are something special. Once Odin sacrifices himself 
to himself and gets rid of that thought process which crippled him and cost him his kingdom in the first war. After he sacrificed himself to himself, then he heard the songs of his ancestors. Just like Arder with the wolf on his ass, in a time of desperation, he found out who his ancestors were and that he had what it takes. Just like uh, Svipdag here, if threatening streams the danger of death shall bring, yet to hell shall turn both horn and root. These rivers, they're unnamed. Uh, and before thee, the water shall fail. There's a rune charm. Odin learns the rune at the moment when he gets rid of those things that keep him from becoming what he's supposed to become. When he embraces the idea of, I am man enough to take care of this. So now she's bestowing, she's told him that in those first three things. You're a man, be a man act like it then these blessings of the runes come into our life the fourth i will chant thee if come thy foes on the gallows way against thee into thine hand shall the hearts be given and peace shall the warriors wish another rune charm i can call uh, calm the enemy or anything else the fifth i will chant thee if fetters perchance shall bind thy bending limbs over thy thighs do i chant a loosening charm and the lock is burst from the limbs and the fetters fall from the feet another one of the rune charms as espoused by Odin. The sixth I will chant thee, if storms on the sea have might unknown to men, yet never shall wind or wave do harm, and calm is the course of thy boat. We actually saw Odin do this in his meeting with Sigurd. On the way to Slifafner, he stepped on the boat and calmed the sea. Yet again, another rune charm. But you notice, she doesn't do any of this for him until he is reminded who he is to begin with. We can't take a shortcut, negotiate the ideas of who we are. We can't walk forward with these crippling ideas that, well, maybe I'm not worth it. Well, I'm just a little bit different. Well, I don't really understand. We have to negotiate those ideas to enjoy success. The seventh I chant thee, if frost shall seek to kill thee on lofty crags, the fatal cold shall not rip thy flesh and whole thy body shall be. Yet again, another rune charm. Then the eighth will I chant thee, if ever by night thou shalt wander on murky ways, yet never the curse of a Christian woman from the dead shall do thee harm. And what them Christian women. <laughs> the ninth will I chant thee, if needs thou must strive with the warlike giant in words, thy heart good source of wit shall have, and thy mouth of words full wise. That is, Odin in the hall of the giants in a contest of wits. Once again, one of the rune charms. Now fare on the way where danger waits. Let evils not lessen thy love. I have stood at the door of the fixed earth fixed stones the while I chanted these charms. So in between the realms, this ancestor, his mother, has enabled the gifts he was already in possession of to go forward into this world and enjoy something some people might only ever dare to dream about and here we all are and also true given a spark to our imagination that maybe I can do some of this shit maybe I do have what it takes she says something very important in that in that last line thine ever shall be the well now fare on the way where danger waits and let evils not lessen thy love we deal with a lot of people in this world we deal with a lot of people who would love nothing more than to see us eradicated, ridiculed, made fun of, just generally not be around. But we can't let that evil lessen our love of the folk and each other. It's okay to love someone at arm's length. But that right there is one of the most important lines in that, in that whole deal of the girl Galder. Let not evils lessen thy love. When we get together, when we make the effort to go through the cold and travel and do all of these wonderful things and get together with the folks we find in the AFA, we can't let evils lessen our love for each other because I promise you the world's full of it. The world is full of all kinds of nonsense that would do nothing more than shut us down if it had the chance. Let not that evil lessen our love for each other. Don't get distracted by the nonsense that pulls us to the left or to the right. Our path is lined by Earth's bolts, no matter what. And if we're looking over that fence about what we should decide to become angry about, 
we're missing the opportunity to enjoy the love, the fellowship, and everything else that's good and golden that comes with the AFA. That's very important in what we're all trying to do. And then she tells him, bear hence, my son, what thy mother hath said, and let it live in thy breast. Thine ever shall be the best of fortunes, so long as my word shall last. What a wonderful blessing from a mother from thousands of years ago. And I think sometimes the people that I counsel, that's what we're looking for. Where's that blessing from our mom to tell us, thine ever shall be the best of fortune. When we get in these rooms with each other and we join together and we raise a horn, my gosh, is that not the best of fortune that we could find ourselves in such a wonderful place? In a spirit of competition, in aspects of masculinity and femininity and my gosh isn't that success because when we leave every one of these we're like i wish it could last a little bit longer and we walk away from there with that idea i got this and that's the same feeling that spit dad walks away from the grave mound with when he gets done talking to his mother remembering his ancestors understanding who he is taking these rune charms into full force and having the courage to love those around him like a man. Thine ever shall be the best of fortune so long as my words shall last. Fellas, when I look at that, when I read that, it, I get to enjoy for just the briefest of moments that great opiate of the masses hope for all of us. What better, more wonderful thing could we have so with that, I think I'm done. That's my talk on masculinity and success. Just a simple, you got this. And as long as you're sitting in rooms like that with each other, you're pretty close to success. From where you take it from here is entirely up to you. Believe in it, love each other. And then go out there and remember that no matter what, there's a mother from thousands of years ago that gives a shit. And I think that's the only thing we ever needed for us to go out there and grab the world by the nose and whip its ass. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate your. I, I appreciate the attention. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Brian. Brian. <laughs> Are there any questions? And you, you, you hit me pretty hard with this message. I've been going through a lot, and uh, I've been wanting to give up on a lot of things, and. 